All right, real talk here. When people wanna develop their intuition, most of the time I hear, hey, I need my third eye chakra to be really wide open. And I cringe, I cringe at that. And while the crown, the third eye, and the solar plexus, those chakras play a really important role with your intuition, with mediumship, and in fact, even in mediumship, the third chakra becomes really important. What I want to share here is the most neglected chakra in mediumship and intuition, and it's the root chakra. Root chakra is so important for grounding. And if you're not grounded, you can feel like a balloon just flying high in the sky, playing in the spirit world. Sounds really fun. But when you have to come back down to earth, if the root chakra is not engaged, you're going to feel really weird and wonky. And in fact, it can negatively affect your intuition and your mediumship. So stay with me. We're going to talk about grounding inside of this episode. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guide. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. All right, so you know I'm loving my Oracle card deck. I am not afraid to say it. It's my favorite Oracle card deck because it came from spirit. And after doing over 10,000 readings and helping others connect to spirit on their own, I started to really understand why an Oracle card deck was needed and what would be really helpful. So if you haven't already, you can get your Oracle card deck, the links in the show notes, but I wanted to pull some cards. So the first card here is strengthen your spiritual practice and connect to source. That is what we're going to be talking about today. So we are on point. The number on the card adds up to seven, which is that spirituality, the spiritual number. And the next card we have here is take time to reflect and integrate. So take a little bit of a pause. Don't try to do everything at once. This is super important if you want to get accurate spirit messages, because if you're not pausing and your mind is not clear, and it's going to be really hard for you to receive. Take a moment to integrate. The next card is divine timing. And the number on the card adds up to an 11. So that might have a specific meaning for you. And let go of your timeline. Spirit has a plan. This is one of the hardest things we struggle with. Our ego wants us to say, hey, you can't do this. What are you doing? You're behind. You're, it's not going you know, on our timeline. And spirit's like, hey, let go of the plan. Let go of what you think is supposed to happen and the timing of which to happen because we have a plan. Now, I truly feel the message here is it's a balance, it's a co-creation between spirit. So I wanted to share some messages before we get into the podcast. And again, if you want to get my Messenger Spirit Oracle cards, the link is in the show notes or messengerspirit.com forward slash cards. Okay. How to ground yourself before spirit communication and the most neglected chakra that we kind of don't deal with, right? When it comes to intuition, spirit communication, mediumship. Well, the root chakra is a big one. When you talk to spirit, your spirit guides send you messages through your open mind. So you're clearing your mind, it's coming in. And generally the chakras we deal with are the third eye and the solar plexus. But all the chakras really need to be healthy and active. Sometimes people think that one has to be way overactive and that would just mean we're not balanced and we can't have that. We need to be balanced. The more balanced you are, the better it is. So grounding before any kind of spirit communication is really important. And we'll talk about what to do, how to do it. I'll give you some ideas because it's different for everyone. But I want you to kind of think of this as electricity. So I think of spirit as electrical and our energy system as electrical. So if you could just kind of think about the electric power lines that we have in the world, what happens 
when those power lines are not grounded. Woo, sparks are gonna fly, people are gonna get hurt, and it leads to an extreme. When the power line is grounded, what happens? Well, we're all safe and we can utilize the energy that's coming through, it can be very powerful, and it's coming through in a more succinct, structured way. So with your intuition, your spirit communication, your messages, if you're not grounded, sure, you might be able to see this and that. So let's say that you're a seer and you're like, I see a daffodil and I see a woman in spirit and I see this. I don't know what it means though. Or if you're a feeler, you could feel everything. Like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling everyone's emotions. I'm at work and I'm feeling the emotions and I'm feeling my family's emotions and I'm feeling my own. And I don't know if this is from spirit or from me. If you're someone who is really intuitive with knowing or in the body, you could start to feel overwhelmed, sluggishness, being really tired and confused about, I don't know, like I'm getting all these ideas and I don't know which way to go. If you are a clear audience, then you might get all of that inner dialogue going on in your mind and you don't know how to decipher what it is. So lots of talking, self-talk, inner kind of voice stuff that happens. When you're grounded, then your messages can come through in a more succinct way that reminds me of a conveyor belt. It's like, here's this one item. Super. Okay. And here's the next message. And here's the next message. When you're not grounded, it reminds me of putting all your messages like in a, in a bag and then somebody just dumps the bag on top of you with all of your messages. And you're like, what is this? What do I do? So one of the things I'll say is spirit, they don't operate like we do on linear timing. So they just go by energy and really in spirit, there's really no past. There's really no future. It's just all present. And so when we're not grounded, sometimes we experience it like that. And it's really confusing. And we are in this physical world. So we just have the sliver of understanding versus when we are in spirit. And if you're grounded, things come in in an easier way. So I just wanted to get really clear on why it's so important. But also after you've done your messages and you've given your messages, you got to come down and live on this earth plane, right? So it's really important for you to drive and to, you know, function in your home, to feed yourself and operate cooking equipment. If you're not grounded, you might forget to turn the stove off. You might not see that stop sign and you might be super, super forgetful. So we need to come back down. If you're not grounded, it's going to be way harder to come back down. If you're a medium or you utilize your spirit connection to help with your clients, which is great, and you're not grounded, people might not understand you because you are not able to explain the meaning of a message in a grounded way. So people are like, oh, you just told me you saw a purple blob. What does that purple blob mean? And if you're not grounded, you might not be able to really grasp or deliver that message as a medium. So this is another reason why it's really important. If you're a medium, you want to make sure that the messages you're giving are delivered in an accurate way. If you're getting messages for yourself, you want to make sure that you're able to integrate it into your energies. Sometimes when we get intuitive messages, we forget. If you're grounded, you will have more of that integration into your body so that you can retain the message and take action on the message. So sometimes we try to go way up high and instead let's look at it as spirits coming down to meet us and we're going up to meet spirits so that we're not way out there in a completely different playing field. So how do you ground? Well, I'm going to give you some tips and some ideas, but one of the first ones is a really just to the point, your root chakra, open up your root chakra, balance your root chakra and allow that root chakra to ground. So energy healing work, doing Reiki, Reiki on yourself, all the different ways that you can open and balance chakras 
utilize that for your root chakra. Each chakra has to do with a sound, a color, a mantra, and an element. So utilizing these different ways can be really helpful for grounding in whatever way works really good for you. But I know that sometimes when we're doing energy work, we'll tend to focus on a specific chakra, especially if one of these chakras are not quite open, maybe a little bit blocked, and we need it to function at its best. But please do not neglect the other chakras. But I want to reinforce the message of just because you're developing your intuition, please don't just focus on the third eye and the crown or the solar plexus, making sure you're giving full attention to others as well. All right, when we come back from this quick break, I am going to be talking about some things that you can try to see what works best for you with grounding. As a professional psychic medium, I've done tens of thousands of readings, but I felt a call to move more fully into teaching intuition, but I still get so many requests about doing readings. So while I don't do readings anymore, I have brought in some very trusted colleagues who are now available for live one-hour readings on Zoom. If you would like to book your psychic medium reading, go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments to see our available readers and schedule your Zoom reading today. Thanks for hanging out with me. We're talking about grounding, and this is one of the biggest topics I had an issue with. I wanted to ground. It was freaking hard to ground, seriously. And a lot of it was because my root chakra just wasn't open and online. And it was really important for me to ground in several different ways. So I'll give you some tips, but I want you to start thinking about other things in your life that might be affecting your grounding. So for an example, if you travel a lot, if you're traveling a lot, then your root chakra may not be quite open like it needs to be because you're not really feeling like a place is your specific home. So if you travel a lot, what's going to be important is to do some of the practices that I'll share with you to nurture your root chakra to be more open. For me, it wasn't travel that was the issue. It was really feeling like I didn't have a foundation. So I was in a a job I didn't like and the job provided money, which really does kind of go into the root chakra area, but I didn't feel really secure. I didn't feel safe. And I didn't really feel like I had a foundation. So if you are feeling any of those things, and please seek out a counselor if there's something really that's going on there. But what I'm saying is, if you're feeling any kind of these thoughts or maybe a disconnection to family, if you're feeling like you don't really like your body, then there could be something going on with the root chakra. Another reason I didn't really ground is because I never exercised. I didn't like to exercise and didn't really pay attention to my body's health and the root chakra governs our physical body. So I really had to look at how can I make some lifestyle changes? For me, I had to make a lot of changes to feel like I was in alignment, which meant I left my job, started my own business exited a marriage and moved. So it was a lot of things to really nurture my root chakra. And this is what happens when we don't make intuitive decisions. So when we make decisions that don't really honor who we are, or we go against our intuition, then we find ourselves in these situations and are not supportive of our energy. And then we start getting physical ailments that happen. Like, wait a minute, why am I getting this ailment? You know, And it's usually because of some sort of external situation that you haven't fixed, which then moves into the body. So it really kind of starts out in the spiritual body and moves into the mental, emotional body. And then if you really don't deal with it, then it kind of moves into the physical body and kind of grounds in the energy. And we don't like that. So I did have some issues in the root chakra physically, where I had to have some procedures to remove some of those things. But I also had to 
just because I, I removed some stuff and, and felt like, okay, I've got some physical health here. It didn't fix it because if I was still keeping myself in a toxic environment, it's just going to happen again, like in, in a different way. So it's really important that you look at what's going on in your life to see what you can shift and some, and can change if you're having trouble with grounding taking care of the physical body with rest, diet, health, that's going to be really important too. But let me give you some tips that you can try. So with grounding in the root chakra, it really goes with the element of earth. So getting outside in bare feet, really feeling the earth. One of the things that you can do is just going outside, kind of wiggling your feet on the earth and just take a deep breath in. And as you're breathing in, just imagine that white light, or it could be yellow light or whatever light you feel coming from the earth. And the root chakra's color is red. So it can be this beautiful red light as well. Just breathe it up through the soles of your feet, up through your legs, into your root chakra. And then just breathe out and really feel yourself open and release. And let anything that you've been holding on to go into Mother Earth with the intention that Earth transform and transmute any negative energy into love and light. So really allowing that connection to Earth is really important and helpful. Now, if it's cold outside or you live in an environment where it's not really fun, like I live in the desert, and let me just tell you, I don't like walking around barefoot. There's a lot of things out there that don't feel good on my feet. So allowing yourself to go barefoot in your home and doing the same exercise inside can be an option for you too. Now, another thing is getting outdoors, being outside, being around nature, connecting with animals. These things can help ground you. And another thing that you can do is really pay attention to your body. So more exercise, but also massages, massage your body, loving your body, connecting to your body. And if you have an association with your body that you don't love, really see how grateful you can be for it. I love you, body. Thank you for giving me this life. Thank you for being this vessel for me in this time. And sometimes we just neglect our body. We just, we want to enjoy food or we don't want to deal with any issues we have. So maybe that's what the food's covering up. So it's really important to kind of look at, hey, I love you. Thanks for breathing. Thanks for keeping me alive. Thanks for being this vessel. And massaging your body can be really nice too. The chakras also correlate with certain scents, meaning smells, if you want to say that. So one of the things that you can do is to use an essential oil. And of course, using your essential oil, please be safe when you're doing this. What I like to do is put it in the diffuser. And there are also some oils that have been diluted so that it's safe to put on your body, but you need to make sure you are paying attention to that. You know, I'll put my favorite root chakra oils in a link in the show notes. Patchouli is a great one. Vetiver is a good one to help with grounding. So utilizing some essential oils can be really helpful. And crystals, any kind of red crystal generally will resonate with the root chakra, but there are some that can have more of a grounding effect than others, an opening effect too, to your root chakra. So one of my favorites I recommend is red jasper. It is one that can help you with that grounding and that energy, but it doesn't work for every single person. So it's really important that when you're choosing a crystal that you really feel, huh, will this crystal work with me and asking your crystal? And if it's not going to work with you, then it's not for you. What do you do with a crystal? One of the things you can do is put it in your left pocket because the left side of your body receives and you can put that in your jeans or in your pants. And it's just really easy for you to receive that energy. And if you're resting and you're laying down, then you can put that root chakra crystal right on the root chakra and just allow for that to happen. I would actually put my hand over my root chakra and a crystal in between my hand and the root chakra and feel Reiki moving through into that chakra. So that's really important too. When I used to do readings, I would put this red Jasper underneath my chair so that it was a reminder that I would ground as I was giving messages. 
Now, another fun little tip you can do is buy red underwear and wear it. So you're wearing it right on the root chakra and you can even buy red sheets because the root chakra resonates with red. If you walk into your closet, how much red do you have? If you don't have any, then that's a sign perhaps that your root chakra might be out of balance. If you have lots of red, maybe it's out of balance and it's overactive. So adding more red into your wardrobe can be something that's really helpful too. Another tip that I give my students is eat root chakra vegetables, potatoes, any kind of root vegetable. This can be really helpful. Whenever we used to do a spirit circle in person, I was always kind of way up in the clouds, even though I would ground ahead of time and I had to drive home from my office. So I would actually keep a bag of grounds, like coffee grounds, and would smell those coffee grounds before I went home. It was a grounding food, but it was just the smell and the scent. Some people do choose to have a decaf coffee or some sort of root kind of tincture or tea to help them with that too. And the last thing I want to say is if you feel like your root chakra is not balanced, I want you to reflect on, am I not releasing something? The root chakra physically is where we release waste in our body. And it is also a huge component of how we release energy from our body as well. If you're holding on to old grudges, old things, old patterns, then it may be harder for you to ground. So one of the things that you can do, write all the things down on a piece of paper, put everything that you feel that is holding you back onto the paper. And when you're ready to release, you can state an affirmation. I release, and you can read it out if you want and bury it because you're using the element of the earth and ask for the earth to transmute and transform this stuff, the stuff that you're still holding onto. And honestly, the best way to help you with that is to literally release. And you might need to seek out a therapist or a counselor or someone else to help you release some of the stuff that perhaps you've been holding on to for years. All right. I hope to see you inside of my free intuition and spirit guide masterclass that I'm doing live. And I'll put the link in the show notes. And I will be back next week with a brand new episode. But until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. If you want to continue the conversation, join my free Facebook group at messengerofspirit.com forward slash group. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to stand spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.